The renovation that I did on this garage a couple months ago turned out fantastic. All the walls are paneled really nicely. However, there's one small issue. I really have nowhere to put clamps. My quick and simple solution for the time being was just slapping the clamps up on the exposed rafters. However, one clamp fell off and completely snapped the handle that had epoxy back together and the back. And another one fell and bent the lead screw so bad that it no longer works. So yeah, that was my fault. So instead of breaking more and more clamps and potentially hurting myself with these clamps falling from the ceiling, let's just make a simple clamp rack. For this project, all that you need is just a little bit of three quarter inch plywood. Half inch plywood might be okay here, but clamps are heavy, so I erred on the side of caution. Now I am definitely not gonna need this entire panel of plywood, so I'm gonna cut it down to its final length of 50 inches. But since I don't wanna cut directly into my workbench, I'm gonna set down a couple pieces of foam insulation, that way I can cut, and I'm not gonna make any marks on my bench. This foam insulation is super, super cheap from any home center and serves as a perfect cutting surface for virtually any cut. After marking out the 50 inch mark where I need to cut this panel, I clamped down a straight edge and after making sure that it was perfectly square, I ran my circular saw against the straight edge to get a dead straight cut. No fancy track saw needed here. So with this panel broken down to 50 inches, I know that all the other pieces that I cut out of this are also gonna be the exact same length. So this thing is gonna go together perfectly. But I should also mention that because Craig is the sponsor of this video, there are free, yes, free plans for this project listed down the link in the description. So check them out if you wanna build this for yourself. So rather than having to blast you with an ad read about a security system, VPN service, or some disgusting green shake, just know that all the blue tools that I'm using today are from Craig. And if you want to support the channel so I don't have to rely on irrelevant ad reads to keep the lights on, consider subscribing or hitting that like button at the end of the video if you think I deserve it. When you grab those free plans, they tell you to start by ripping a six and three quarter inch strip from that 50 inch long panel. Then slide your table saw fence over just a touch farther to five and three quarters of an inch and rip another 50 inch long strip. Just a little bit more moving your fence to three and a half inches to rip another 50 inch long strip. Then lastly, slide your fence all the way into two inches to rip that final 50 inch long strip, leaving you with four different size pieces. So with those four main pieces for the clamp rack cut down to size, we can set three of them aside and focus all of our attention on the three and a half inch wide piece. This piece is going to be the one that actually holds all the clamps. So I marked, actually, I think it'd probably be a lot clearer if I just jumped into SketchUp to show you exactly how this clamp rack is gonna come together. So here's a brief overview of the model. You can see that the rack is made up of six individual pieces. One top shelf, one back panel, one clamp holder piece, one support piece, and then two sides. The piece that I wanna work on right now is the clamp holder piece. So let's isolate that one. As you can tell, this is the piece where all the individual clamps are gonna slot into. And to make that actually happen, I need to cut out all of these notches. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of the direction that I'm headed. So let's jump back into the garage. What I'm doing here is marking out all those notches that I need to cut out. Here's one for example, but I need to mark out each and every one. This is kind of tedious, so I cut a scrap piece to the exact width listed in those free plans and worked my way all the way across the board. All right, so now that I've got all of the little notches marked out on this strip here, this is gonna be where all of the individual clamps themselves go and they can just slide right in. But we gotta cut all these pieces out. So I figured that the fastest way to cut out all those notches would be with my dado stack. Now this was a mistake, but my other mistake was that apparently my microphone died. So let's do a little bit of overdubbing just like watching Squid Games. Oh, look at that. So I kind of feel like an idiot. I went to put the dado stack in the table saw and thought that this is gonna be a super fast way to cut everything. And then I remembered that my dado stack is only a six inch diameter, which means that I only get about one and a half inches of cutting height. Oh, looks like my mic is still dead. 
All right, so my next idea was to just use a jigsaw to cut out all those notches, but the problem with the jigsaw is that it has a tendency to produce a lot of tear out and it's not super accurate. So then my idea was to use a bandsaw to cut out all these notches. With the size of my bandsaw, I could get the spots on the end, but there's really no way that I'd be able to get the ones on the inside. But after all those failed ideas, I think I have one that'll work. So instead of using that dado stack, I just pop back in my regular saw blade. But after all that gyration, now let's get them cut. All right, I promised that there were only two more clips where my mic was dead, but I wanted to include those segments because creating all this content is just like woodworking. Sometimes we make mistakes and we have to work on overcoming things. Instead of scrapping all of your work and giving up, come up with a clever solution and make the best of it. Anyway, cutting all these notches out with the standard table saw blade was definitely not the fastest, but it was one of the only ways I could come up with at the time for cutting those notches out reliably. I basically just took my time lining up the blade to one mark and then chewed away all the material between the lines. But if you have any other ways that you can think that would have made this faster and maybe more precise, I'd be curious to hear them down in the comment section below. I should also mention that if there's a specific tool that you're curious about, there are links to every single tool that I own down in the description for you to learn more about them. There's also some great discount codes too for products you might enjoy. All in all, that process took me about 10 to 15 minutes, which isn't too bad considering how it turned out really well, plus no nasty tear out from the jigsaw. Real quick, I did want to let you know that I attached a sacrificial fence onto my miter gauge, that way there's no tear out on any of those pieces. And because these edges are a little sharp, I'm going to grab a 1 8 inch round over a bit and break all those edges over. <laughs> Could you tell that I still didn't notice that my mic was dead there? Alright, seriously though. No. Now I promise that was the last overdub clip you'll have to suffer through and I fixed it from now on. So now that we've got that piece where all the clamps are going to slot into, we need to attach it to a support piece just to give it a little bit more rigidity. And to do that, all I'm going to do is take my one smaller support piece and I'm going to put it in my pocket hole jig and drill out some pocket holes. Oh, and by the way, if you want to build a sweet boom arm that keeps your dust collection hose up and out of the way, there's a video linked to that in the description. Seriously though, having this boom arm is freaking nice because I don't have that hose dangling all over the floor and getting caught on my workbench anymore. Plus, it's really easy to build. With all those pocket holes cut in this piece now, I'll just lay down a little bit of glue and then fire everything together with some pocket hole screws. I fully admit, yes, I am more than likely over-engineering and over-building this clamp rack, but parallel clamps are super heavy. This rack can hold up to 25 clamps, which will be close to 175 pounds. Now with that piece super solid and locked in with those pocket hole screws, I can take a little bit more glue, apply it to this back panel here, and then stick these two pieces together. And it really doesn't take that much more effort to reinforce everything with some extra glue and screws. From the back side, I'll blast in a few screws real quick to hold these pieces together before grabbing my drill to pre-drill and countersink some slightly deeper holes. I'm making sure to drive these screws into those sections that are going to be holding the weight of the clamps, again, just for extra reinforcement. There's absolutely no way this thing is falling apart. So now that we've got the back piece on and it looks pretty solid, the next thing that we need to do is grab the upper shelf piece and attach it right here. And as you can probably guess, that means more pocket holes. I just realized I forgot to tell everybody that I started a podcast with Zach from Zach Builds. We answer all your woodworking questions and have a great time. So if you wanna check out that podcast, it's down in the description below. Now back to pocket holes. If you've ever had any questions that you wanted me to give a long and detailed response to, email them to offthecutpodcast at gmail.com and we will answer them on the air. Now, one thing to be aware of when you go to attach this top shelf is that if you're gonna put your clamps up in a really high location, put the shelves with the pocket holes facing up, that way you'll never see them. But if it's gonna be in a low location where you're actually gonna use that top shelf pretty often, do it this way. That way the pocket holes are hidden. Sometimes it's the simple things that make a big difference in the builds. With the main structure of the clamp rack finished, the next thing that I need to do is cut down pieces for the sides. And just to change things up, I grab my crosscut sled, link in the description for that video, and well, I ran into an issue. <laughs> oh, 
honestly, I feel like an idiot sometimes. I was making this cut here and dust collection pipe got in the way. We all make mistakes. Seriously though, you are not the only one who makes silly mistakes in the wood shop. Everyone does it and it's totally normal. Don't beat yourself up and think that people on YouTube are perfect because they're definitely not. Or at least that's just me. To get those side pieces to their final dimension, I grabbed my miter gauge with built-in stop block and first ensured that the edge was perfectly squared at 90 degrees before lowering the stop block down and butting the workpiece up against it. I don't care how accurate you think you are, using a stop block will always give you more consistent results and make it super, super easy to make repetitive cuts. With those side pieces cut, I also need to cut a 30 degree angle right about here. Real quick, if you made it this far in the video, leave a comment down below that tells me your favorite way to eat a potato. I read every comment, so writing something like french fries or hash browns lets me know that you actually watched the video. So if you have a question or just want to support what I'm doing here, leave a comment down below starting with something about potatoes and I promise I'll get back to you. And if you would like to support the channel even more so I don't have to annoy you with reading ads about hair loss or shaving your pe- My body! Consider picking up merch on my online store like a hat, a t-shirt, or even woodworking plans. All right, now back to the build. This 30 degree angle can also easily be achieved by setting the miter gauge to one of its preset angles. A touch more wood glue on the ends, and then I can line the pieces before clamping them in place. But I don't have any clamps that are 50 some inches long, so these pocket hole clamps really come in handy for situations like this. Just insert them into the hole and get a super secure fit. Then just drive the screws home. To help protect the clamp rack from clamps banging against it over time, I'm gonna apply some satin finish using some Total Boat Halcyon. Instead of covering the entire project with the satin finish, what you actually want to do is start with about two to three coats of the gloss and then put the satin on top of it. That's because the satin finish has some flattening agents in it. It'll make the finish just a little bit cloudy if you applied tons and tons of layers, whereas the gloss doesn't. Hopefully that was a helpful tip, but you probably don't want to watch me spray all this. So I'm going to start with the gloss and then we can just get it mounted on the wall. The wall mounting really could not be any easier. Just fire some screws through the back, obviously making sure to hit studs, and this bad boy's done. Once again, I wanna remind you that because Craig sponsored this video, there are free plans linked down below so that you can build this clamp rack for yourself to make sure that you stay perfectly organized in your shop. Don't have a bunch of fancy parallel clamps? This design works for smaller F-style clamps too. 